Yeah, the hoop house is just a single layer of plastic. A greenhouse will have a dual layer of plastic with an air uh, input that separates the layers. And those separated layers add insulation and make them uh, more usable through a longer period of the season. This is basically a, a hoop house or a cold frame that definitely takes the edge off. We can plant in there earlier. We can even plant. There's things that grow through the season um, in, the, in the greenhouse uh, or the hoop house. Uh, but if we wanted it to be a, a year round, more year round, you'd want to put another layer of plastic on that and uh, have a blower that would blow air in between. But basically it's constructed from hoops that are made from the top rail of chain link fence. And this is a hoop bender here. Um, so we'll demonstrate how to, how to bend a hoop here. But uh, we'll bend the hoops. And there's a ten, two 10 foot sections per hoop. Uh, and this is the line post on the chain link fence that, it's already out. So this would be cut in half. This is uh, an eight foot section. So you cut it off in four foot sections and then you would uh, um, pound it into the ground. And if I were to do it again, I, uh, I pounded it in so that there is, there's uh, about this much sticking up out of the ground. Um, I think that probably two foot sections is what I used in the ground. So we got at least three sections out of this at least, or four sections out of it. Um, to anchor it in the ground. But if I were to do it again, I would probably uh, have it sticking up out of the ground higher. And so you'd have higher sidewalls and you could, you could grow taller things and you'd have a higher hoop. It would take more plastic. Um, of course, a higher volume. It takes more to heat it up uh, with, with the sun's rays, but uh, it can get piping hot in those, in those hoop houses. Uh, but this would raise it up and make it a little bit easier to walk along the sides because the way that these are made now, they kind of curve over pretty quick, but I would maybe raise it up a little bit anyway and give myself a little bit higher volume on the inside of my house. So I'm gonna come down this way a bit here. So this is the top, the top section. And so it's going to, it's going to fit together. Um, it's called, it's called schwagging, I believe, where they, they restrict this end and it's gonna fit into the next piece um, like this. So one half of the hoop house, you're gonna start your bend on the schwagged end. The other half of the hoop house, you're gonna, you're gonna bend starting at this end so that they'll meet at the top, right? Um, so this one's here. So we'll just put this into the top up here. And basically, I've set it up on this this uh, device here. Uh, so this is a hoop bender from a company called Johnny's back in Maine. Um, but uh, we'll bend it around the arc of the of the hoop bender, and this just helps give it leverage. It's a flat surface with a nice plane, and we got lots of leverage on it right now. Oops! But what I need is to actually have um, here. I'll just set. Uh, set this down in the in the groove here there we go all right it may still want to kind of torque around and go up that other way i should have screwed it down so we'll keep it in the same plane here We're just bending it around the arc and then we'll slide it through up to the top of the bend there and we'll pull it through some more Here. And this is where we'll add some leverage to it. So this is a, just a, another piece that's been put together to give you an extra end here when you get to the short end of the stick. You ready there? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna put a little bit more on it. Oh, I can? All right, there we go. So there's half of a hoop that's been bent. <clears throat> So this is half of, half of a hoop. Oh. And we'll do another one here and, and if somebody wants to try it, you're welcome to try it. So this one, we'll want to do the swag end first so that it meets at the top. Oh. 
Okay, so we want to we want to pull on it. Sure. So you want to pull on it, try to pull it on, it, on a, so it stays in the same plane, and you don't kind of get a wonky a wonky bend. So, so you got to kind of lean into it, lift it up a little bit so it comes over the top of that. Come on, give it all you got. All the way down to the a little bit more, a little bit more, one more. Good. Okay. Now we'll, now we'll shove it forward until it gets to the bend there. Okay, and then someone else want to give it a go? It's going down. I'm going to yeah, tip it up. Okay, go ahead. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Let's go. Okay, you know what? Um, maybe someone, anybody bigger want to try this? This is the toughest one right here. Oh, the toughest one? Yeah. Come on, Jackie. I can do it. You can do it. I can do it. I think. <laughs> I don't know. I need to do this one at home. There you go. So try to keep it kind of right. down into the view there. There's a course called Okay, that's good. All right. Is that good enough? I think so. Okay. I'm gonna give it. If you're ready, I'm gonna give it just one more, one more pop here. Okay. All right. So the one end you want to have have straighter. The one that's uh, coming up. I think I bent it the other way. So. <clears throat> did we shift them both the other way? Yeah. Um, so you want it to be, and when you put some tension on it, because the, the spacing on the, the width of the, of the line post is, is 12 feet, so you're going to put some tension on it and it's going to bow up a bit when you pull the tension in to, to make it go higher. I see. To, to pull the ends into where they need to go. Okay. Did you so, just do it? Did you just use a sled or did you use a post? So we used a uh, post pounder and they actually make a a uh, post pounder head. It's a heavy head that's been milled so that it inserts into the top of that and then has a higher head so that you're not mushrooming your your post. Yeah. Um, so you can sledge it or use a post pounder to do that. It's a special, a special insert. Um, and then we put these sideboards on it as well. There's some additional um, eye bolts that uh, are, are put in on this lower end here so that you can see it's laced on the exterior to hold the plastic down. Mm -hmm. And we have these cross tie connectors that are on these horizontal purlins. Uh, they typically have you putting them down here, but I intentionally put them up higher because I use them to do my tomatoes. To be aware of new videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to the Preparing for the Time of Trouble channel. For more free videos and downloadable audio podcasts, as well as handouts, go to www.preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com. Topic categories include recordings of live seminar presentations, country living, sustainable gardening, homestead remedies, how to be self-sufficient when the grid goes down, wild edible and medicinal plants, hydrotherapy, and end-time Bible prophecies. To take advantage of these free resources, go to preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com.